Good evening, everyone. At the onset, I'd like to thank Dr. Shashank Shah for this invite and asking me to deliberate upon this very important topic and an interesting concept of GLP-1, GIP, glucagon agonist, also called as dual or triple therapy that you're looking at for treatment of diabetes along with weight loss. So can I have the next slide? So at the onset, I'd like to discuss that whatever molecules I'm going to talk about are under investigation and are undergoing active clinical development program. I have not used any of them, nor have I been any uh, investigator in any of the research programs so far. So whatever I go to talk about is based on what is available in public domain. Can I have the next slide? So when we talk about diabetes, we've come a long way from the insulin-centric time variate theory of pathogenesis of diabetes. We've now moved ahead and we are now talking about the omniscious octet uh, since the last one decade, which has been implicated in the pathogenesis of diabetes. And in this, integrin family has been Incretin family has been a very uh, evolving uh, family of molecules which have been really implicated in the pathogenesis. And it has changed the way uh, we look diabetes as. Next slide. So as we all know that uh, incretin effect uh, is one of the newer things which uh, is now being actively pursued uh, for treatment of diabetes. And in this family, we understand that these molecules are either deficient or their action is missing, which leads to hyperglycemia. Within this family is the either the GLP-1 or the GIP or glucagon, which have shown to be causing hyperglycemia to a good extent. So if one was to maneuver these pathways or these molecules, then one can definitely achieve good glycemic control. And on top of that, you have the added advantage of weight loss. Well, uh, the incretin family uh, is now being actively explored because we've noticed following bariatric surgery, the metabolic dysfunction improves remarkably even before actual weight loss is seen. And that's because of change in hormonal milieu, predominantly the incretin family. The changes in the levels of GLP, GIP, and glucagon, which have been uh, as in uh, the causative agent responsible for the improvement in metabolic milieu. So let's look at these molecules individually and how they affect the metabolism. Next slide. So let's talk about GLP-1. We all know that these are polypeptide hormones and GLP is secreted by the L cells of the distal intestine. And at the level of the pancreas, GLP-1, uh, if you talk about the beta cell, it increases or enhances insulin secretion. At the same time, at the level of the alpha cells, it reduces glucagon. So the predominant effect being an increase in insulin, decrease in glucagon, thereby leading to better glycemic control. Apart from that, there are a lot of extra pancreatic benefits of GLP-1. At the level of the brain, it is supposed to be neuroprotective and it improves memory. And this is being now actively pursued uh, in the treatment of neurocognitive disorders like Alzheimer's. Apart from this, at the level of the brain, we know that GLP-1 uh, decreases appetite, it improves satiety, and thereby causes weight loss. This is definitely going to be beneficial because you're going to treat the root cause of obesity, which is uh, the root cause of diabetes. At the level of the heart, GLP-1 is cardioprotective. It improves cardiac output it improves myocardial contractility and thereby benefits. Obviously, uh, there's a mild uh, increase in heart rate, which is seen with GLP-1 molecules, which is one of the flip side of GLP-1. 
at the level of the vascular tree it improves endothelial dysfunction and it improves endothelium vasodilatation which is very important in patients with diabetes at the level of the adipose tissue glp1 molecules enhances lipolysis and uh, causes weight loss which is beneficial so if you look overall glp1 molecules if glp1 agonist are used definitely you see good degree of uh, metabolic improvement uh, good degree of weight loss and cardio as well as neuroprotection and this is what we've seen in uh, both research as well as clinical practice because now we have glp1 molecules glp1 receptor agonist which we've been using since almost one and a half decade and we have got ample evidence that these are good molecules glp1 receptor agonist whether it's the short acting or the long acting they really improve the metabolic milieu next slide so let's look at the second molecule in this family of the incretin pathway we are talking about glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide also called as gip this molecule a polypeptide hormone is now being actively explored and research have shown some conflicting data as regards to its effect at different tissue levels so uh, this slide basically uh, depicts what happens uh, once you stimulate the gip receptor at the level of the brain or the pancreas or the adipose tissue or the bone or the heart for that matter if i have to give you a crux of gip agonism let me have the next slide it basically at the level of the pancreas at the level of the beta cells it enhances insulin secretion which improves glucose control at the level of the alpha cells unlike glp1 gip basically causes increase in glucagon levels which is probably not that great at the level of the brain as well as the heart the effect of glp of gip almost similar to that of glp1 it offers you neuroprotection it offers you cardioprotection just like what is seen with glp1 however in addition gl gip has the added advantage that at the level of the bone it offers you osteoprotection it promotes bone formation it prevents bone resorption which is one of the advantages of gip agonism it differs gip differs from glp1 at the level of the fat adipocytes glp1 just to remind you it causes more of lipolysis whereas gip agonism or stimulation causes lipogenesis so if you look on a whole if you were to stimulate both glp1 receptors as well as gip receptors let's look at what is going to be the advantages and disadvantages next slide please so at the level of the pancreas beta cells definite enhanced insulin secretion at the level of the alpha cells uh, glp increases glp reduces glucagon whereas gip is going to enhance glucagon so the net refer result probably is going to be g glucagon neutral on the other side at the level of the brain both are neuroprotective improves neuronal plasticity and uh, definitely at least the preliminary results have shown it reduces the cognitive dysfunction which is seen in alzheimers at the same time at the level of the brain both the molecules act in synergism synergism or have an additive effect as far as decrease appetite and promotion of satiety is concerned culminating into good amount of weight loss at the level of the heart both glp1 as well as gip offers you cardio protection enhances cardiac output
by enhancing the cardiac contractility as well as at the level of the vascular vasculature it improves endothelial functioning gip also has the advantage that it offers you osteoprotection at the level of the adipose tissue glp1 basically causes more of lipolysis whereas gip causes more of lipogenesis so probably the net result may be neutral if is one has to take on a one is to one basis an effect of both next slide let's look at the third molecule namely glucagon which is involved in this family of incretins glucagon as we, as we all know is a major counter regulatory hormone uh, which increases during hypoglycemia so definitely glucagon if you look at the level effect of glucagon stimulation glucagon receptor stimulation at the level of the pancreas on the beta cells glucagon causes an enhanced insulin secretion at the level of the brain glucagon reduces food intake it improves satiety culminating into good amount of weight loss stimulation of the glucagon receptors at the level of the adipose tissue causes more of browning of adipose tissue it increases the resting energy expenditure leading to good amount of weight loss at the level of the heart glucagon also stimulation also causes increase in cardiac output increase cardiac contractility with a smile increase in heart rate which is seen with glucagon receptor agonism so the net result if i have to see if i give a molecule which is capable of acting on the glucagon receptor or on the glp receptor or on the gip receptor simultaneously on all these three receptors then definitely what you would note or what you would expect is enhanced insulin secretion better glucose control uh enhanced weight loss because all these three molecules once their receptors are stimulated they decrease food intake they enhance satiety at the level of the adipose tissue you're going to see more of browning of adipose tissue you're going to see a more reduction in adipose sites and therefore the benefit that you have with simultaneous stimulation of all these three receptors would be good glycemic control good amount of weight loss which is what seen following bariatric surgery and taking a cue from this these results post bariatric surgery this uh, this pathway is actively being explored upon as a therapy for improvement of metabolic dysfunction improvement in obesity next slide so if you look what is common in uh, all these three molecules in the incretin family is that these are polypeptide hormones and all of them act via a g protein coupled receptor so they share a great degree of homology in their sequence and if you have molecules which are either of fusion or if you have a balanced hybrid which can stimulate either two of these receptors or three of the receptors you can see the benefits of all the three molecules or two molecules respectively and now we have molecules which are being explored and investigated modified amino acid sequence you can have either a balanced fusion or an imbalanced fusion or you can have a balanced hybrid molecule which is capable of acting at all these three receptors at different sites what we call it as multi agonist or poly agonist molecules or ligands next slide so you are looking at a molecule which is capable of not only acting at either the glp1 pathway or receptor 
simultaneously it is capable of acting at the level of GIP receptors or the glucagon receptor. So you're doing a fusion, something similar to what this modified car was. You have a lot of uh, multi-agonist molecules under clinical trial actively pers being pursued in phase one and phase two trials, which have the capability of simultaneous stimulation. You have dual or triple agonist molecules which are being actively explored upon. I'm going to take you through a couple of these molecules and the research so far being done. Next. So this is LY329-8176 molecule, uh, a molecule from Li Lily, also called as Glipgip, which is capable of uh, stimulating the GLP-1 and GIP receptor. It's an 39 amino acid linear peptide, which is conjugated to a fatty acid moiety to prolong its half-life. It is a multifunctional peptide based on native GIP peptide, modified to bind to the GIP and GLP-1 receptors. It has a half-life of about five days, enabling once weekly dosing. So this is a good molecule capable of stimulating GIP as well as GLP-1 receptors. Next slide. So this study was presented at ESD 2018. And this was a phase two study, which was dose finding study. And this molecule or glipgip as we call it as, was used at different doses compared with dulaglutide as well as placebo in the other arm. So since this was a dose finding study, different doses of this molecules was studied, one milligram, five milligram, 10 and 15 milligram respectively, when compared to placebo and dulaglutide used as 1.5 milligram once a week dosing. Obviously these were type two diabetic patients who were uncontrolled. Next slide. And what you noted was, if you look at this study, which is a 26 week study. Yes, since it was a dose, uh, dose finding study, a small number of patients and a short duration of study. But as expected, if you note, compared to only a GLP-1 receptor agonist like dulaglutide, which is a good molecule, we note that when you have simultaneous stimulation of GLP-1 receptor as well as GIP receptor, you note that with a dose of this molecule at dose, which is maximum, you see a greater degree of reduction in HbA1c vis-a-vis -vis dulaglutide alone. The weight loss that you see with dulaglutide on an average is about 2.7 kilograms. But the weight loss that you see with this molecule at a dose of about 15 milligram is to the extent of 11 kilos. So much greater weight loss when you have simultaneous stimulation of GLP-1 and GIP vis-a-vis -vis only GLP-1 receptor stimulation. Uh, the HbA1c reduction is also much greater. With dulaglutide, you see a reduction of 1.1 in A1c, but with uh, this molecule, Glipgip, the reduction in A1c is to the tune of 2.4%. So you note the amplified if effect of this molecule when you have simultaneous stimulation of GLP as well as GIP. So with the GLP-1 molecule, we all know that the reduction in A1C is to the extent of 1%, whereas in this molecule, 2 to 2.5%. The reduction in weight loss with GLP is about 2 to 2.5 kilos. In this molecule, almost about 11 kilos. That means on an average, individuals can lose 15 to 20% of body weight, which is what we want in most of our obese diabetic patients. Good glycemic control, good reduction in weight. Next slide. Well, if you look at the maximum dose, at maximum dose of this molecule, Glipgip, which is 15 milligrams, the effect was phenomenally 
encouraging and better but obviously gi tolerance or gi side effects also increased namely nausea diarrhea vomiting so these were definitely high what was also not studied in this study to a great extent was the risk of pancreatitis so that caveat is there but i'm sure research is going on and we'll come to know about it very soon what happens to incidences and occurrences of pancreatitis next slide so there's been an impressive reduction in a1c as well as uh, weight with this twincretin or glipchip which is simultaneous stimulation of glp1 and gip receptors next slide so this molecule is now being actively pursued by li lily and it has a very robust clinical trial program which is ongoing and the results are very very encouraging so in order to mitigate the gastrointestinal side effects which occur at an increasing frequency with simultaneous stimulation of glp and gip uh, the common practice has been so far gradual dose escalation so this is what is now being even used even for twin cretins next slide uh medi 0382 is an other molecule which is uh, being explored upon it is simultaneous stimulation of glp1 receptor and glucagon receptor so i showed you one molecule which is simultaneous stimulation of glp gip and now another molecule being actively explored upon for with simultaneous stimulation of glp1 and glucagon and in this study uh, you compare this molecule with placebo and this is phase 2a study again dose finding and what doses were used was about 300 micrograms with uh, one or two weekly titration in this trial this was again uh, presented at esd 2018 as i said this is phase 2 the duration as well as the number of patients are going to be relatively smaller next slide next yeah so if you see the results compared to placebo the reduction in weight was about 3.3 kilograms for a very short duration of time you see encouraging results in hba1c with simultaneous stimulation of glp1 and glucagon receptor yes risk of side effects gi tolerance definitely is there even uh, with simultaneous stimulation of glp1 and glucagon you would uh, note an increase in heart rate because both these molecules individually would definitely increase the heart rate so simultaneously given simultaneous stimulation of both the receptors would lead to an increase in heart rate and this is what we would want to keep a watch on next slide so the results of this study indicate at highest dose of about 300 micrograms of this molecule the weight loss that you see is definitely better glucose control is definitely better now it's being actively looked upon in comparison to liraglutide how does this flare and they are also actively pursuing it in combination with dapagliflozin next slide so i spoke about twin cretins or dual agonist let's talk about triple agonist that is simultaneously stimulating glp1 receptor gip receptor and glucagon receptor and this there are molecules in this molecules which are capable of acting on simultaneously on all these three receptors and stimulating them leading to downstream signaling and yielding good metabolic control good control of weight loss i would say and these are all phase 2 studies phase 1 and phase 2 studies which these molecules are undergoing next slide triple agonist or triagonist definitely represents a sizable step forward beyond previous attempts of co agonism and reflects the growing notion that a single molecule polytherapies definitely are emerging as the gold standard for treatment of diabetes as well as obesity 
it is conceivable that this newly discovered trigonist or triple therapy could be used to deepen and broaden the efficacy in targeting of nuclear hormones or find application combining with other protein based therapies as we search for newer and newer drugs which improves the metabolic milieu which can offer which can be offered upon as alternatives to bariatric surgery which in some patients may not be possible due to cost effect cost economics next if you look at uh, this slide it shows you one such molecule which is a triple agonist uh, which stimulates glp gip and glucagon receptors which is being explored upon in animal studies and it has shown better results as far as glucose control is concerned as far as weight loss is concerned as far as nash and liver fibrosis is concerned at least in animal models and this is a pathway which is now in research and i'm sure over the next few years you'll see a good number of molecules being uh, actively pursued along this pathway next so in a snapshot if i have to tell you dual agonist if you were considering glp gip simultaneous receptor stimulation in terms of brain the results are good amount of weight loss by decreasing appetite and decreasing food intake improving satiety at the level of the liver definite glucose metabolism improves at the level of the fat there's some degree of lipolysis and decrease in fat mass which is seen with co stimulation of glp and gip receptors if you were to look at co stimulation of glp1 and glucagon receptors uh, you see almost similar degree of weight loss similar improvement in uh, glucose profile better results as far as browning of adipose tissue is concerned and better results as far as uh, hepatic steatosis is concerned next if you were to look at triple agonist definitely good metabolic control good control a good degree of weight loss uh, good reduction in hepatic steatosis and uh, increase in browning of fat and this is what we would want so you have one molecule which is capable of stimulating receptors of glp1 gip as well as glucagon and, and thereby cascading downstream signaling leading to enhanced or improved metabolic milieu so next slide so that's my last slide thank you very much twin tritons or uh, polyagonist molecules are something which after this talk uh, i would say are molecules which are of the future and i'm sure these are quite interesting fantastic molecules and let's look at uh, as and when data gets published on them but it's very encouraging and enlightening uh, i would like to thank dr shah again for giving me this opportunity actually because of this presentation i actually had to do a deep thorough reading about these molecules and it was worth doing it thank you very much